will not talk about Power Rangers Zio. Um, not until at least next month, because I have a lot of thoughts on that show. But, in the meantime, I decided to throw on a show that I haven't seen since I was, like, what, 10, 10 years old? 13 years old? Um, not even 13, I think it was 10, yeah, it was 10. Um, so it's been at least, uh, 11 years. Um, yeah, Ninja Turtles, The Next Mutation. Now, I do want to talk about the rest of the Ninja Turtles shows, leading up to the new movie. But I just really wanted to get this one out of the way because, my God, this show is weird. As in the title, like I said, this show is one of the weirdest shows I have ever seen. It is a live-action Ninja Turtles show made by, um, uh, uh, what was this made by? I completely forgot. Anyway, this was a show in the vein of Power Rangers, which, as we all know, is very goofy. Um, this show had, uh, people in these big, huge suits. Kind of similar to the movie from the 1990s, the first three films. And the suits themselves look pretty good. They're not bad whatsoever. Um, they have some weird moments with the mouths, of course, but that's, of course, what the price you pay when you have these kind of, you know, uh, animatronic-like suits. Um, especially when you have mocap people and, the, like, you're not having mocap, you can't, like, capture from movement. So, yeah, I mean, they, they look fine. There's not nearly as good as the Jen Henson suits. Um, yeah. The, mo the show itself. Um, what is this show about? Not only is it a Ninja Turtles show, not only is it a live action in the vein of Power Rangers, but, <laughs> weird thing is with the show, it is, it brings in a fifth turtle named Venus, who not only is a fifth turtle, it's a female turtle. And this is a very... Different thing for Ninja Turtles, but look, hear me out. It could work. I, when I was a kid, I thought it was very weird, but I was like, yeah, I mean, Fifth Turtle, Ninja Turtles are great as always, so who cares? As an adult, <laughs> which this show is not viewed to be, not meant to be viewed through adult eyes. Definitely, this was aimed at very young kids, way more than Power Rangers was. Power Rangers had some great, uh, like mech suits, some great scenes, some great fight scenes, had really good cinematography, really good fight choreography. This show doesn't really have any of that. It's more like Power Rangers was successful. Let's make a show about Ninja Turtles in live action because they proved it can happen with the movie. What they know is that that movie had Jim Henson. <laughs> That's why that looked good, but anyway. So, with the fifth turtle, Venus. Um, my thoughts on her, she's fine. She's okay. Um, she's not terrible. I don't think she's that bad, really. Um, she has, like, this weird accent, but I guess that's because of her past and her relations with the villain and the turtles themselves and the turtles' past. They make some very big adjustments to the backstory here, which I'm not entirely against, but they make some huge adjustments. It's crazy. Um, they really do. They, uh, it's insane. But I do think it's fine. It's necessary for what they're doing with the show, because... I don't think it'd really be, like, the best interest of the show if they just didn't do that. While also introducing a fifth turtle, one that we have never heard of before. With Splinter in this, you would figure that he would at least know of her. He does not. Not really. Not to the extent that you would think he would. Um, but also, yeah, and there's... She's okay, I mean, she's fine. I think a lot of the turtle fans give her a lot of hate. I wouldn't mind seeing her again. But maybe give her a different, like, a better personality. Give her the same backstory. Like, that backstory's fine. Give her a better personality, because she kind of has virtually no personality in this show. Basically, in the show, she's like, I'm learning to be a party dude, like the other turtles. And the turtles aren't actually brothers um, in this show, which is weird. Ugh, it's strange. But yeah, no, um, it's strange. The villain of this, the Shredder, is not in this show. You know, the arch nemesis of the turtles. He's not in this. He gets defeated in the first episode. Bebop and Rocksteady are not in the show. They're Shredder's right-hand men. Karai, Shredder's daughter, is not in this show. Rat King is not in this. Letterface. All these humongous Ninja Turtle iconic villains are not in this show. What do they replace him with? Well, the Dragon Lord. And the Dragon Lord is your average, everyday Power Rangers-esque villain that would show up for like two episodes, be really hard to defeat, and then get killed off. That's literally what this is, and it is kind of terrible. I think that's my least favorite part about the show. A lot of people are like, oh, Venus is the worst part. My worst part is the Dragon Lord. I think he's awful. He has good animatronics. Everything else in him sucks. He has zero personality. He always, he has the, he tries, they're trying to do like a Lord Zed type thing with him, 
but he's not. He's not scary. He's not intimidating. He just kind of shows up and just does stuff. Um, the other villains in the show, you have like this monkey dude who looks like an, an albino monkey. He's nothing. He's like a crime boss. He doesn't matter. Um, you also have this little tiny puppet looking gremlin guy. I forgot his name. He's terrible and annoying and I hate him. Literally the worst part of the show in my opinion. One of the worst. Of the, the Dragon Lord. I think he's awful. Um, yeah, the villains of this show just do not work for me whatsoever. They are awful additions to the turtle lore. I don't think I've ever seen them in anything else. So that just goes to show you that the filmmakers and the people behind this also are like, okay, yeah, we're not doing this again. And it makes sense because these things are just terrible. Why don't you just keep the shredder? The shredder is you're already doing like these animatronic turtles just with these guys in suits. Just do the Shredder because you don't need to do more than just five turtles. Do, and if you have Shredder, that saves the budget. It makes things easier. But no, he's gone in the first episode. Splinter in this show. He's also animatronic. He looks cool. I don't, actually, he's one of my favorite parts about this show. He has a good personality. He has a Splinter personality. I've always loved Splinter in every single inter- incarnation of Turtles. Um, anyway, but... Yeah, he looks good here. I think he has a great... And he has his scenes where he, like, goes into his ethereal realm, which is fun. I don't know. They really do do a lot of good stuff with Splinter in this. Like I said, this show isn't awful. It isn't the worst thing in the world. It's just really misguided. And this show that just really just doesn't really know what it wants to be, really. What it wants to be, of course, is to be appealing to kids, but also wants to appeal to Turtle fans. But it kind of is isolating them, adding all these new elements. But not only that, that's fine. But also, having these god-awful villains replace the perfectly fine villain you had in the first episode. With the Shredder. And it just makes very, very standardized. And really, just kind of slap in the face to the Turtle fans, in my opinion. The story of this is this every season of Power Rangers. Where the villain sends, like, tells someone to go kill the Turtles. Doesn't work. I was telling someone else, doesn't work. They get an ambush, doesn't work. Um, and it's just constant. It is constant. And with Power Rangers, that's fine because that's just how Japan works. That's just how their content works. With this, this is an American made show. And it doesn't even try. They don't have the excuse, like, oh, we had stock footage, so we have to incorporate all this um, uh, crazy footage into this, you know, just, yeah, because, yeah. And they don't have that option. Not at all. What they do have is some really terrible storylines. And I get what they're trying to do. They're trying to appeal to a broader demographic. They're just trying to appeal to people who like that show, Power Rangers. But they're also trying to appeal to people who love Ninja Turtles. Which the original show had just wrapped up at that point with 10 seasons. Again, I'll talk about that another day. But when they they really did solidify this by having... A direct crossover with the current a Power Rangers show at the time in space, which is one of the best Power Rangers seasons out there. If not the best, it is a great season. Now, we'll talk about it eventually. But what sucks with this, what really does suck, is that um, putting these turtles alongside those Power Rangers, it just causes just rip whiplash because you're like, these are basically the same idea. But they're just kind of, you know, one's clearly better right now. Which, there has been better Ninja Turtles adaptations, there's been better Power Rangers adaptations. But you're, it's just weird. It's really weird. And I get why, because again, they want to get to that demographic. How do you get to a demographic of that? You'd be like, oh, we're going to promote our show in the Power Rangers world. That is a very smart move, a smart business move, if you're going to make kids cartoons. Because like, oh, I like that character. I want to see Michelangelo in the show. Because in case they didn't hear an Ninja Turtles, which they probably did. Because that show was everywhere at the time. Including, like, definitely the 80s show. But yeah, um, what's really... Just, man, it's just a weird show. It really is. Um, There's not really... I mean, look, the vehicles... The turtle man in this actually kind of looks amazing. I think it looks great, better than any live action version we've gotten thus far. I think it looks really cool, and I really want to drive that thing. Raphael's bike is cool. Um, but another problem with the show: the turtles all have the same personality, which is something a problem that you really don't want to run in with turtles because that can easily happen. The '80s show, everyone was a party dude in a sense, but they all had their distinct personality traits. 
Donnie, inventor. Ralph, tough guy. Leo, leader. Mikey, party dude. Um, and so this, what is this? They're all party dudes in this. I mean, Donnie has some occasional, like, smart dialogue, but Venus is more of a leader in this than Leonardo is whatsoever. Leonardo on occasion is like, okay, team, we gotta do this, but it doesn't even come across as fun or even, like, remotely Leonardo-like, because in the next minute, he's like, hey, dudes, I'm gonna put a pizza in my face. <laughs> this is like, okay, whatever. Um, Not saying the Leonardo can't be a party dude, but it's like... They don't all need to be, you know, maybe one, two at the max. Not all. That That's stupid. Um, and it really does, it's, it's, it sucks. Not, not, there's no word to put it. It's bad. Um, and they just all have enough same personalities. It's not great. April isn't really in this show much. She's mentioned, kind of. Um, at least, where, yeah, I watched 26 episodes and I didn't remember seeing her once. So correct me if I'm wrong. I don't, and that takes away a huge part of the show be, and the characters because you're just like, you have no one to explore this world through. Like, if you have a human character, of course, which sometimes that could be a bad thing. If you have too much of a human character, you need to have something to be like, okay, that's weird. Um, that's a dragon man. Because a Ninja Turtle will be like, oh, dude, that's funny looking. But he won't be like, oh, my God, that's horrifying. Because, you know, it's a Ninja Turtle show. They're not going to care. They're Ninja Turtles. Having a human element in there makes it interesting. That's probably why the show only went lasted for two seasons. Because they just didn't have much interesting... I, too many interesting ideas. And it's a shame because this show could have been great. It really could have. Um, I think that this a live action digital show is a really good idea. Because you can do a lot of things with that. You can actually do some really interesting stuff. I'm hoping that we get a Netflix show one day that is live action. Kind of based on the last Ronin story, which I think was a 2020 um, little graphic novel. I'm not going to spoil it, but it's basically like one turtle's left after three of them die. I think that would be cool if they want to do another live action thing with turtles. Because they're having an animated movie coming out with Seth Rogen next year, which I am excited about. But yeah, um, let's close out this little rambling review with one last thing. Um, So, here's the deal. Um, the theme song with this show is insane because not only is it weird, it's a, I think it's fine, but there are two different versions of this theme song. You have one that is more of a like speeder rap type deal where in it's, I think it's terrible. It's very nineties. The second one is more okay. It's fine. You know, there's some really dumb lines in it. But it's not, like, egregious. I think it's fine for a Ninja Turtles opening. The first one they did was terrible, and I'm happy that it's not where the one that's known that's put on the Shout Factory DVDs. But this other one, ugh, I don't know. But yeah, that's a weird thing. The show had two theme songs in the matter of two seasons. The first season of Ninja Turtles, like, the first, like, series, didn't really change up their songs till like, season seven. Because they, they knew it was perfect for one. And for two, yeah, that's inconsistent. This show's like, oh, we're gonna change it up twice in this only our two season run. I don't know, this it's incompetent. And that's weird to say with this show. This is definitely a kid's show. There's some very just really crash humor that's not funny, but I mean, hey, it's a kid's show. From the nineties. And you know what? I liked this when I was a kid, so I can't get too mad at it. You know, like I said, this wasn't supposed to be viewed through your adult eyes. But if you do view it through adult eyes, this isn't a very good Ninja Turtles adaptation. This is probably like one of my least favorites. Probably is my least favorite of the shows. Even more than something like the future one. Which is an extension of 2003's show. But I think that's kind of awful. The future part is. But yeah, this one's probably my least favorite. Again, some redeeming qualities. Good things in this show. But overall, it's not very good. And um, yeah, it's just a very, very weird idea. That did not come through at the end. So yeah, uh, we're going to be talking about Power of Zio next month. I'm not done with the show yet, that's why I haven't posted the video yet. I have just had life stuff, and we should be like, Hey, how did you run through 26 episodes of Ninja Turtles show and not like 50 of a Power Rangers? To that I say, Power Rangers is just, I don't know. I feel like I can just get through Ninja Turtles quicker. Which I love Power Rangers, but Ninja Turtles just, I feel like I can just get through that a lot faster. Uh, but yeah, that should be out next month, and it's gonna be a little bit longer than my Mighty Morphin video, because that video was just, 
it was fun. It was a fun video to make. Um, but yeah, no, this one's gonna be a lot longer. With that being said, what do you guys think of the internals to the next mutation? And I will see you next time. Thank you.